seven, eight years ago, I set up a company called Minicorp, and at the very beginning, it was full of excitement, not knowing what to do. It was stuff everywhere, it was violent, but it was a lot of fun. And I'll never forget us moving into our first offices or where we were just really finding our feet, trying to figure out how to do tax returns, how to navigate the whole space of creating a company. And at that time, there was me and one other guy. The other guy's name was Jan, and he was a CEO, and I was like the creative tech person. And together, we were this immovable force that really wanted to disrupt the whole market when it came to creative agencies and what a creative agency could be. But, like with all of these things, as a company slowly starts to scale and things start to get busier, other things start to take up a lot of time in a company. Things like looking after the office, administration, VAT returns, tax returns, hiring. There's so many of these things that take up a huge amount of time. Number one, and probably the most important of which, is finance and making sure that you're all over the finance game. And this means looking through financial reports, it means looking at Xero or your accountancy software and seeing how much money is coming in, how much money we're spending, what services we're using from Adobe to uh, GitHub and all of the other services in between. They all need to be accounted for because pennies make pounds. The one thing that I slowly started to notice is I wasn't really good at that. It's very messy here. <laughs> you think that I put in the effort to tidy up the thing, but anyway. It's not that I wasn't very good at it, it's just that I didn't find that type of work in any way inspiring. Like, it's, it's just not the type of person that I am. I'm far more on the creative side, where my skills and talents have always lay is within trying to figure out how to grow a product or what is the most creative way to design something or to build something or to look at all of these different Lego blocks and arrange them into something that is really powerful. And when it comes to the job of the CEO, the CEO does so much more. They're really important and vital to ensuring people within the company are happy and growing and they have a strong career path, that there is cash in the bank and that things are always going up and to the right and that we're always thinking about securing net profit margins and growing the finances and the bank balances of the company versus what I've always wanted to do is to be really focused on new creative and imaginative things that I could do. Things like this, things like creating a YouTube channel, recording videos, putting myself out of my comfort zone, but enjoying the creative process. Here's a little tidbit, but this painting behind me or poster or whatever you want to call it. I got it framed quite some time ago because it means a lot to me. A lot of the whole startup ecosystem that I grew up in, what they really believed in is the idea of these unicorns, these one billion dollar plus valuation companies. They're mythical creatures and things that you're really chasing the dream of and the probability or potentiality of you getting a unicorn or building a unicorn company requires so much luck and so much, you just don't know whether it's gonna happen, the probability is low. Versus I've always believed in this, which is the rhino, which has like thick skin, constantly plodding along, you know, like it's so strong because of its thick skin and the speed, but it's so consistent in that it never stops moving and it's always constantly going. It's like that old uh, proverb of uh, the tortoise and the hare. This to me is a tortoise and I think a lot of the unicorns are like hares. So creating strong, profitable, growing companies has been one of the biggest things that I've always strived for. So then, Fast forward a load of years, probably far too many years, but the company Minicorp started to grow and went on this really crazy up and to the right trajectory. Started to hire people, started to build out the team, there's like 10 plus, maybe 15 people in the company at one stage, and we were spending a lot of money on salaries, people, the company, operations, all of the bits. What we were noticing, through no fault, really, it's just when you think about it, as you scale, you kind of lose sight of these things, but the bar of what 
creativity was coming out of the company, I was watching was slowly starting to edge down. And so we wanted to react to that as fast as we possibly could. So we took it upon ourselves to have a sit down with pretty much the entire company and say, listen, the bar, the reason our company exists and what we're trying to accomplish is getting this creative bar from here to here. How do we get that back? And there was a lot of refactoring, a lot of moving and changing and it was a big point in our company's history. But what we realized is the people who then stayed with the company into this new movement, into always increasing the quality and always increasing the creativity that was coming out of the company, we were going to build something huge. And that's what we've been building over the last 12 months. But that also meant changing my own personal Role. You gotta put the right people in the right roles. It's like it's like a football team, it's like any type of sports related activity. You put the best people in the best suited positions. And for me, being the CEO was not the best position for me. The best position for me is where I can be creative and where I can work on client products with client ideas and start to look at different creative and imaginative ways that I could come up with in order to create some really cool concepts, ideas, and products together with our clients. And I'm absolutely loving it. A lot of people kind of come back to me over the last while and said, well, moving from being the CEO to now where you are as like the CTO or the, the producty person, how does that feel like? Does it feel like a demotion? And it's not. For me, it's so much more powerful to be in a position where I can provide the most amount of value to the company and thus to our clients. And I look back at the work that I've done over the last kind of six to nine months, and I'm so proud. I'm so proud of the work the company has done, the output of the different creative work and concepts and ideas, and how the company has pushed forward in its momentum. It's huge and I think ego might have gotten in the way for a while but once I got rid of that whole ego thing and I met the legend that is Jack Power and asked him to become the CEO so that I could focus on this creative task and putting the right people in the right position everything changed and I'm so happy everybody loved you in the last video you gotta come on this video too say hi muffin mm -hmm. You see, when we really think about it over the last couple of months by being able to focus on the creative aspects, the company has started to move forward by creating YouTube videos, by creating exceptional products for our clients and offering the most amount of creativity and capability from within our team to our client projects. All of this is just like push the forward momentum of our company. And we look at the future. For me, there's so much excitement where I get to think about building really big deals. Like what happens if I took company one, two, and four and matched them together with large company three, five, and six, and then brought in some private equity and crafting all of these really creative business ideas too. All of this, I guess it's just a roundabout way of saying that it can be tough to make the really simple decisions. But when you look at the writing on the wall, to place me in the best position in the team is to place me in the creative role. And I think what was holding me back from that is that I always felt from watching movies or whatever it might be, that being the CEO is like being the big boss or being the person who's in control and in charge. I still own equity, like I still own the company and you know like there's three stakeholders now in Minicorp and that's amazing. They're all of the people that we need in order to forge the future, but being in this position and recognizing this position has enabled me to grow so much. I now get to sharpen my creative sword and push the boundaries of what we can create in the company. I get to inspire new people when they join the company to be as creative as possible, which then again pushes the bar of what we can accomplish within the company. So the future is bright. I guess it's a roundabout way of saying, if you feel that you're not in the right role, no. Nah. You know what? There was a podcast that I listened to this morning that did a great job of explaining this. There is simple decisions and there is easy decisions or a simple path and an easy path. The simple path is never easy. And people always get this confused where they think that what we're trying to shoot for is an easy life. It's not, it's a simple life. And the simple decision that lay before us in Minicorp is 
is Brian the best CEO or is Brian the best creative person? And what is the best position to put him in in order to increase the potential of the company? And that's to make me the creative person. So ask yourself, are you in the best position? And if you don't feel that you are, or that you don't have the right people around you, I would focus like a laser on making that happen. Because anything else, anything that is sacrificing the value and the quality and the work that you're accomplishing and delivering to your clients within the company, it's gotta go. This was my first ever video on my new slick camera. I got one of these, check this out, hold on. I also got a slick stand. One of these, a Sony ZV-E10, and one of these, 10 to 20 millimeter, and the stand. You like all in, it was like a thousand euros or something like that. What I wanna do is just like, it's time to invest into this YouTube channel thing, and it's time to push the boundaries of what we're gonna be capable of doing, so lots of really great 4K footage, videos, high quality. You need to get an audio, like a mic, what do they call it, like a shotgun mic for this next? Onwards from there. Okay, that is it for this episode. Thanks a million for watching. I have to say, I got some really great feedback recently on LinkedIn and a few other places and people reaching out saying that these videos really mean a lot to them. So thank you for subscribing and thank you for watching. It means a lot. Onwards and upwards, my friends. Any questions, holla at your boys, send me a message. We'd be delighted to get back to you. Cheers.